This man-eating grizzly, an unstable but capable Bruin, now defending its kill, came charging out of the brush, intent on ripping Tim Sterling to shreds, perhaps cashing his body away as well, perhaps near the rotting carcasses of his recently deceased wife and small child. Tim staggered at the sight of it, its eyes red with fire, and it barreled toward him at its last stand of survival. Tim fired his rifle from the hip, bullet skewing past the bear's shoulder. Another shot, a miss. Steam and blood came from its mouth, jaws open with thunderous roars and bellows coming from deep within, still charging. With not a moment left to react, Tim stood frozen in horror. What came of his wife and child? Why is the forest around his cabin lifeless and desolate, not even with the sounds of the birds chirping? Is this a nightmare? He could almost hear it from a distance, the innocent and youthful blood from his wife and child screaming from the ground. What's up guys? Iceman here. So this story is called Backyard Bear, and from what I've seen of it so far, it's a very unfortunate story, and a mother and young daughter lost their lives in this incident. It's even more horrifying that this incident happened on their own property to what I believe was a vacation home. But nonetheless, before we get into the story, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support on this channel, as it has been growing exponentially. And I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, and subscribe to the page and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. So before I run you into the ground with these grisly details, let's get into this bear of a story. The following story is one of the most unsettling grizzly bear attacks in modern history, and it's unusual that it took place when it did, in the vast Yukon Territory. Named after the Yukon River, the territory is the westernmost area of Canada, bordering Alaska to the west and the Beaufort Sea to the north. The climate consists mostly of the subarctic classification with varying degrees of precipitation, with some areas experiencing more of a dry summer pattern, but the majority of the land area receiving year-round rain or snowfall. Sparsely populated currently, the Yukon contains some of the earliest evidence of human habitation in America, as it escaped glaciation during the last ice age. At the time of the 2016 census, the population was reported as 35,874, which is actually the highest population density of the three Canadian territories. The economy of the Yukon relies heavily on natural resources, mining, and especially prospecting for gold, brought many of the early European settlers to the territory, and mining for metals like zinc, silver, and copper is still the largest industry. Outdoor tourism is the second largest segment of the economy, and the Yukon provides vast national parks and reserves, territorial parks, and natural historic sites for thousands of yearly visitors. Hunting and trapping were previously important sources of food and income for Yukon residents, but now those activities are mostly done on a recreational basis. Big game animals in the territory include moose, mountain caribou, elk, wood bison, doll sheep, goat, grizzly bear, black bear, coyote, wolf, and wolverine. Trapping for furs is also done on a licensed, regulated basis. According to the blog of the Yukon Trappers Association, in 2018 there were 560 licenses issued and 349 registered trap lines in the territory. The yearly harvest of furs is estimated by this organization to top $1 million, and it serves as an important winter source of income in smaller communities. Nine fur-bearing animal species in the Yukon are eligible to be harvested for their pelts. Beaver, coyote, ermine, 
Fisher, Lynx, Martin, Muskrat, Otter, and Wolf. Value of pelts varies depending on animal and condition, but has declined in recent years due to ethical objections to fur as clothing. According to a popular trapping blog, in 2019, a western coyote pelt could sell for $75 to $100, a beaver for $10 to $20, an otter for $20 to $30. Tim Sterling ran a trap line on his recently acquired Yukon property and wintered there with his wife Mallory in 2019. Mallory Sterling, 36, along with her eight-month-old daughter, Maddie, were brutally mauled to death by a desperate grizzly bear on November 12 of 2019. Their bodies were found only 10 yards from the cabin, torn to pieces and half eaten. Authorities estimate it was a rather quick death for the both of them, and the bear was intent on killing and feeding. A malnourished 19-year-old male bear, which greatly lacked body fat, not capable of hibernation in its current state. An autopsy revealed the bear pursued an uncommon diet out of desperation, even eating a porcupine in its affliction. Multiple quills were found penetrating its digestive system. Such discoveries revealed the notion that this bear was in great pain and in need of proper nourishment. Bears in the area normally hibernate from November to late spring, it was a rare occurrence in this Northern Territory. And Conservation Services Director Alfred Hitchcock told journalists that the couple were known to be careful in the backcountry, well experienced and knowledgeable about the potentially dangerous wildlife near their cabin. She was a beautiful woman, new mother, and middle school teacher taking two-week vacation to enjoy nature with her family. The family had breakfast together the morning of the attack, a fine breakfast consisting of eggs, bacon, hash browns, and tea. Tim left the table early and put on his outdoor overalls and grabbed his rifle. He set out early that morning to check the family's trap line. Excitedly, he discovered a fisher and two beavers from his quest. A smile enveloped his face as he imagined returning home to his wife with such valuable finds. He began rushing home, only to his surprise to notice fresh bear tracks on his way back. They appeared to be heading towards the family cabin. He made it to his destination, only to find stillness and quietness all about him. No laughing or playing sounds coming from the small cabin. No birds chirping, just Silence. The hair on the back of his neck began to stand as he called out for his wife and received no response. He rushed into the cabin, his wife and child nowhere to be seen. He then began creeping toward the nearby sauna, 30-odd six rifle in hand with one in the chamber. About 200 feet from the cabin, Tim heard a growl and a grizzled grizzly bear came blasting out of the bush. He shouldered his rifle and took a shot, hitting the bear in the lower chest as it continued to charge toward him, unfazed. He chambered another round and quickly fired a second time, hitting it in its head, staggering it, but not taking it down. The third shot dropped the bear, and he put in a fourth just to be safe. As the dust settled, the scene became cryptic. He found the mangled bodies of his half-eaten wife and child only a few yards away. Clearly, the bear hid away in anticipation of Tim's arrival, anticipating and premeditating a third kill. Tim dropped to his knees, tears pouring down his face as he grabbed what was left of young Maddie and clung it to him, his life for the moment destroyed. It was found later upon post-mortem examination that the 19-year-old male bear was emaciated and completely lacked body fat, incapable of hibernation. And also, the Department of the Environment investigators found that the bear tracks went off the trail around the time the mother and daughter arrived to the scene, effectively concealing itself 
behind the branches of spruce trees before the surprise attack. It's likely the bear stalked the woman and child as they went on their early morning stroll around the property, sneak attacking them as it also later attempted on the husband. Mallory had the baby on her back, so it's likely she was attacked and taken to the ground in such a manner. The bear likely mauled her half to death and then pursued the shocked and crying infant, making quick work of its soft and vulnerable, premature, helpless body. It's likely they faced quick deaths as the bear mercilessly neutralized them and fed its starving body. Their blood cried from the ground as all of Yukon gave condolences over these innocent victims' lives. Jeez, what do you guys think about this incident? It's such a horrifying thing to imagine how this could really happen to anyone. Mallory and her husband were very well weathered with outdoor scenarios in the Yukon. They had this cabin for many years and were very knowledgeable about the wildlife. It just seems like it's almost a freak occurrence because the bear should have been hibernating. But it's just one of those things that you can't rule out no matter what. Even if the probability of something like this is extremely low, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It's simply a matter of whether or not it's possible. And the reality in this situation is it was possible that a bear would still be lurking, even though unlikely. And it was possible that this bear would hunt and pursue humans, even though such a thing is considered highly unlikely. It makes me even more concerned when I venture out into bear country, as I intend to, hopefully over the next year, and I'll keep you guys updated on this channel of my adventures. But I just want to always be prepared and ready to face one if I'm out in the wild where they live, just no matter what. Could you imagine going through something like that where you lose the two most important people in your life? And it seems that we can only hope it was a swift death for the both of them. As from what I've been discovering throughout my research on this channel in making all these videos, Sometimes these incidents can be long drawn out and filled with suffering and pain. Sometimes the victims survive and I can't help but look at them and put myself in their shoes and wonder if I would even want to live through it. To have to go on with a mangled body for the rest of my life. But let me know your thoughts on these matters. What would you do to hopefully avoid a situation like this? And have you ventured into bear country as of recently? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe got something from it. And again, if you want to help me out, you can like the video and subscribe to this page. And I'll be talking to you guys and gals soon with more chilling tales from the Iceman.